Rational irrationality. It's an incredibly important idea in public choice. Let's take a closer look. Now we all have ideas about ourselves that we like to tell. But in ordinary market, these ideas press up against reality. We might like to tell ourselves that we're charitable. But when the time comes to actually give money to charity, reality intervenes and maybe we don't donate as much as we could. Politics, however, removes the cost of expressing our ideas about ourselves. So for example, when it comes to voting on welfare, we may vote for welfare programs even though we don't give any money to charity. Voting for welfare is costless in a way that giving to charity is not. Because our vote, it won't change the outcome of the election. We may as well vote in ways which make us feel good since our vote is unlikely to matter. Now in this case, maybe this is a good thing because then there's more money given to welfare. But the quantity demanded of all goods increases the lower the price. That's the law of demand. And this is true even of stupidity or irrational bias. And we all have different types of biases. A bias against foreigners or strangers, for example, is probably a natural inclination from evolutionary times. In many ways, civilization is about overcoming these natural biases. But we're not likely to overcome our biases when the cost or the price of holding these biases is low. Let's look at an example of prejudice, one type of bias. Suppose Joe is prejudiced against Asians. Does Joe's bias cause him to stay away from Walmart and just buy American? Probably not, as that would be personally costly. Does Joe's bias lead him to vote against immigration, even if immigration would benefit Joe? Probably yes, because Joe faces no cost from voting in a biased manner. Suppose now that Joe's bias is also mixed with the belief that immigration lowers wages, a potentially true fact. Suppose, however, that studies come out showing that immigration does not reduce wages. Will Joe be convinced? No. Joe has no reason to be convinced. Since being convinced, it wouldn't make Joe better off, but it would take away his comfortable belief. It would create cognitive dissonance with his bias against Asians, were Joe to accept that immigration does not reduce wages. So, do you want to know why politics is so frustratingly irrational? You want to know why is it filled with people who don't evaluate arguments, listen, or make judgments? The answer is rational irrationality, due to my colleague Brian Kaplan and his book, The Myth of the Rational Voter. There's no reason to rid yourself of an irrational bias when it makes you feel good and the price is low. And politics reduces the price of irrationality. Let's give another important example. Suppose there are one million voters and the nation is debating whether to go to war. Each individual, they want to believe that their cause is just, that one patriot can lick 20 foreigners. We have the greatest military in the world. Victory is assured. Justice is on our side. God is on our side. Contrary beliefs, that'll put you out of step with your fellow citizens. Imagine suggesting that our military might not be the best in the world, or that God might be on their side. That's gonna make you look bad, unpatriotic. It could even get you canceled. It's much more pleasant to have patriotic beliefs and to be popular, or at least in step with your fellow citizens. So suppose that having the popular belief is worth $100, or just a hundred. And suppose that if the individual believes that they will vote for war. 
Let's assume, however, that the reality is that if the war happens, it will be very costly. It'll be bloody. It will cost each individual an average of 100,000. So will the nation smarten up or will the nation vote for war? It's war. Here's why. The belief has positive value. So long as 100 minus P times 100,000 is bigger than zero, where P is the probability that a single vote changes the outcome. But notice that with one million voters, P is going to be very small. Since the probability that changing your belief changes the outcome of the election is near zero, there's no reason to change your belief. Thus you believe and vote for war. Think about it this way. You don't get to choose whether the nation goes to war or not. You only get to choose your belief. And if the belief that God is on our side and we're going to win, if that belief makes you feel good, well, sometimes illusion could be rational. Rational irrationality, it's a little bit like a pollution or congestion externality. The cost to each voter of having an irrational belief is near zero. But over the entire population, the costs of irrationality are very large. The bottom line is that since politics removes the cost of choice, it can be very cheap for a voter to vote for irrational and foolish policies, even when such policies are very costly to the nation. And they're especially likely to do so when the foolish policies make people feel good. To complete this, let's compare rational ignorance with rational irrationality. Rational ignorance explains why people, they don't know about policies like the sugar quota. Rational irrationality explains that when you tell them about the sugar quota, they stop listening and they respond, but we need to do it to protect Florida's family farmers. And that's rational irrationality. If you want to learn more about public choice, check out some of our other videos.